employee engagement has hit a new all-time low. How's your team doing? Are you sure? In February, Gallup released their research on employee engagement, and it's not great news. An 11-year low. That sucks. In this new world of remote work, organizations face a new challenge, keeping their distributed workforce engaged and connected. The number of employees who said they were engaged or highly engaged, 30%. Think about that. Two out of three quiet quitting, disengaged, and looking, or worse, maybe, disengaged and stay in put. Now, it's clear traditional engagement strategies are no longer enough. And the last thing we want are people stay in who are just completely disengaged and checked out, or maybe worse, key team members leaving. Yeah, that hurts. Don't get blindsided. Despite the overall downward trend and kind of negative news, there are some top performing organizations that are bucking the trend and maintaining engagement levels up to 70%. And you might think, you know, it's just kind of twice as much. But when we take out the mushy middle and really focus on those that are really engaged uh, versus the ones that are not engaged, it's 14 to 1. 14 engaged to every one disengaged. And that is seven times the national average. So it's not just, you know, double. It's way more than that. So which side do you want to be on? And I want to be on that side where you have a lot more engaged people. So let's talk about how they're doing it. And I'll link the full study in the show notes. Of the employees who were less engaged in their work, that number was 4.8 million in this study. You know, compared to a year ago, 4.8 million are saying, yeah, we're less engaged. The drops in engagement were most pronounced among younger employees, like under 35, those who work exclusively on site, and those must be an unhappy bunch, right? The, the return to office crowd. But hold on, think again. Hit just as hard are those who work exclusively from home. And I'll tell you, that really surprised me, but it actually fits what we've experienced as a company. Without that daily face-to-face -face interaction, remote employees can feel like they're disconnected from their colleagues and in the organization as a whole. This sense of isolation combined with blurring of work-life boundaries, you've probably experienced that, I know I do, yeah, that leads to decreased motivation, productivity, and sometimes less job satisfaction. So if we look at the ones that are doing well, how are the top performing organizations maintaining the high levels of engagement despite facing the same challenges as the low performers? And they've embraced the following strategies. One is they have created intentional hybrid work environments. Organizations have designed hybrid work policies that fit their unique cultures. It's not just a one size fits all. Uh, but it's also not either or, it is both and. So it's not just remote, it's not just in office, it's both. And they provide clear expectations and guidelines supported by managers who balance flexibility with accountability. And I think that's really important that we think about both of those together, not in isolation. But by offering the right mix of in-office and remote work, they foster a sense of connection and belonging that is unique among their distributed teams. And those could be domestic or international. The second commonality we see is they're investing in robust onboarding programs. And this was another one that shouldn't be a surprise, but it's just not something that I'd thought about this way. And it's really recognizing the importance of a strong start. Now, the companies develop comprehensive onboarding programs tailored for remote employees. It's not just you know, the same thing that we do for the people that are in the office. This is something that is specifically designed for remote. And by providing the necessary tools, resources, and support from day one, they set their new hires up for success and help them quickly integrate into the organization's culture. Brilliant. And third is prioritizing employee well-being. Top performing organizations took a holistic approach to employee well-being, offering a range of services and resources to support the remote workforce's physical, mental, and emotional health. And I think all those are really, really important, especially for remote. It's for everybody, but especially remote because they are isolated or, or you know, certainly isolated more. And these are things from virtual wellness workshops to mental health support 
but it's really demonstrating a genuine commitment to their employees' overall well-being. So very well received, keeps people engaged. Remote work absolutely continues to shape the future of business, both domestic and international. And as leaders, we have to figure this out in our own companies and learn from the top performers who have cracked the code on engaging remote teams. Now, I always appreciate learning from other people's experiences and getting a glimpse of what's possible when companies adapt and innovate in the face of new challenges. And we face those all the time as leaders. You know, like every company, my SaaS company team went remote and for the most part stayed that way. We had a big office that was mostly empty for two years and I almost gave it up when the lease ended. But instead of just giving it up and being completely remote forever, uh, we downsized. And I didn't realize that at the time, but it was a huge, huge decision to keep that space. You know, it was just one of those things I thought we, we ought to have an office somewhere. It's just, you know, kind of weird not to. So we did, but moved to a hybrid model. And that has worked extremely, extremely well because nothing beats time together. But by embracing strategies that foster connection, support, and well-being, you can build a highly engaged remote workforce that drives success in 2024 and well beyond. This remote trend is here to stay. And the path forward is clear and sometimes a little scary as leaders, but we have to reimagine employee engagement for the new world of work. What about you? What strategies are you using to engage your employees today? Let me know in the comments.